Are you good there? Welcome everybody to Tai Chi to the People. I'm Coach Jan. And today is going to be a very special concept sharing that we're doing right now from The Alter Ego Effect by Todd Herman. It's an amazing book that influences uh, a great deal of my life and work. And I highly recommend you check it out. It's all about creating an alter ego for yourself and how it references how top performers, top athletes, top entertainers, uh, CEOs have utilized the same technique to perform at the high levels that we know them as, um, that, that we know them for. So, uh, and this has been instrumental in my company, uh, Real World, our company, Mark's on here as well. Uh, uh, we've been building Real World together with our team. And, uh, and of course, Justice for Hire, which also, this is partially, in part brought to you by uh, the, the Tai Chi's Good People. And check us out, justiceforhire.com, realworld.com, R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. -E -E but today I wanna to talk about this amazing concept, which is allowing, you probably felt this when you've allowed somebody to get into your head. When you allow someone to get into your head, they control your, you allowed them to control your movements. This is really, really important for Tai Chi. And uh, this, this uh, Todd spoke, speaks about this in uh, chapter 12 and, uh, and 13, chapter 12 of the alter ego effect of having, he's speaking to an athlete, a young athlete that's like 11 years old and he's coaching. And, um, and the young athlete is saying that he's going, going up against guys that are bigger than him. And Todd is letting him know uh, that he has let these guys into his head. He says these guys are bigger than him. They, he can't move them. He, he can't even hit them. Um, and it's really, really powerful because you can engineer this. You can, it, it, it's happened to, to, to me many times. I'm sure you've experienced this at one point or another in your life where somebody, it feels like somebody's controlling, um, where you have given someone else power in a scenario where you are essentially allowing yourself to feel like you can't for whatever reason. I can't because they, and it, that language is so important. That frame of mind is so important. And what I want to talk about today is instigating that in your opponent. From a Tai Chi push hands perspective, we do this all the time in the sport of Tai Chi push hands. As a matter of fact, I do it all the time anytime I play freestyle push hands. Because when I play freestyle push hands, my intention is to play the game at a level that is so subtle that the opponent gets confused, frustrated, starts giving up on themselves. I want my opponent to give up on themselves. So it's really, when people have said to me, Jan, what you do, it's not Tai Chi. To me, from my perspective, that is a, those comments are coming from a place that have, has not dug deep enough into what the flow of pressure, redirection pressure of pressure is. I believe there's another perspective. And that perspective is that emotional pressure, um, the pressure of a thought that bubbles up in your mind, which has weight, shape, and more, um, is akin to the pressure that we might place on each other with hands and, and our bodies and push hands. So if I'm not playing with the thoughts and the minds, then what am I, what am I really doing? <clears throat> to me, that is also comparable to uh, someone who might scoff, who believes them at themselves to be a Tai Chi master and might scoff at a UFC fight and say, oh, but you know, they're, they're not really, they're not, they're not, uh, they're low level, like there's a higher level of mastery. And then th that same person might say, oh, Jan, what you do is not Tai Chi. <laughs> you know? Like the, there's a, a level of subtlety that, that, that their original comment on, on the UFC fighters, uh, I look at UFC fighters, I see world-class athletes, and, but I also see a sport that it will, uh, that just like the rest of humanity has a lot, a lot of room for improvement and optimization of energy expenditure, everything. So this concept of controlling your opponents uh, by getting into their heads, again, kind of flip turning the tables uh, and being able to do that on call. I've had people just, just touch me and feel like, oh my God, what like, you know, I love that they're like, I don't, I don't know what to do, I can't do anything. And that's, you know, it's cool and fun to an extent. However, uh, what's even more fun is sharing how to do that. Um, like, you know, the last thing I want to do is, is have someone respond to me like that and then not 
share with them how they can do it too because otherwise like what am i gonna just walk around all day like you know feeling like like untouchable that's insane also so <laughs> everybody you know can be touched and moved so uh i want to share this today some exercises that i feel like will be very helpful they're very helpful to me in push hands because this is the kind of stuff that um the subtlety of moving a shoulder moving the, the pec moving the rib moving the belly and inflating the belly, the obliques, et cetera, pushing the hip out, bringing it back in. Um, when you're uh, body to body with your opponent, et cetera, there are moves that we'll do that you probably already do in Tai Chi, but we want to make it more intentional of doing these, these small, subtle movements to create the sense of, of losing space. Um, I just read a comment on one of my videos a few days ago from someone who is referencing what I call with Josh Waskin, my coach, and Dan Caulfield, the assistant coach, assistant coach that coached me, um, they called it the anaconda. And they brought it from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and the concept of constantly eating space so your opponent feels like you're getting tighter and tighter and tighter on them. But it's not that you're squeezing them more tightly. It's that you're claiming the space that they give up every centimeter. Meaning when they exhale, you claim that space, you relax into it, and you don't give it back. And... Uh, by relaxing into these spaces incrementally with a slight shoulder movement, a slight pectoral movement, and then exhaling, shifting the body weight to claim that space fully on your opponent. These are very, very subtle ways to control the opponent's space. And you can do it in a more overt way as well. You can place the finger, move the opponent's arm slightly, and then when they come back, there's less space. And then you move it again, and then there's less space, and you move it again. And so your, your hands on the elbow, et cetera. There's all these different ways to make an opponent feel like they're losing space. And when they're losing space, they're thinking about getting it back. When they're thinking about getting it back, that's when you press them somewhere else. And then they step and then they're like, oh, my, my ground, my root is not uh, intact, et cetera. So, um, and that leads to a domino effect of essentially someone losing confidence. And when you can make the opponent, when you can catalyze the opponent to choose to lose confidence, it's not that you're controlling them per se, it's that you're catalyzing a particular event. And it's perceived by those who, like, I think it's, it's more egoic to think of it as, as you're controlling the situation. It's really more so that you're catalyzing, because you're a scientist, uh, <laughs> you're catalyzing a particular effect that's tried and true. And you could do this over and over again, it's repeatable. And you have to also stay in a particular mind state um, to maintain that, to maintain that that level of, of uh, flow because then your instigations are causing a reaction and therefore you are, and you stay in that same position, meaning the mental position of consistently catalyzing the reactions that you are seeking. Um, so we're going to get to this right now. And I'm going to, I am in downtown LA, so I am not necessarily in a, in a place where I would feel super safe placing this phone without it falling through the cracks and falling down. But you know what? We're going to, uh, we're going to test fate today. Testing fate. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to start, uh, hey Mark, do, do I, am I, am I okay here? Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. And you can hear me. Yep. Good. All right. So imaginary string lifts from the top of the head, tailbone, of course, drops straight down, soften the knees, weight shifts to the heels. And, and Todd Herman is also talking about the, uh, the, the value of the power of the, of, of the posture, the lean back posture. We're not really leaning back as much as we're shifting, keeping the weight on the passive side on the heels versus the aggressive side, which is the ball between the big toe. You want to utilize that when you intentionally want to. We're going to keep the weight passive, passive power, palm power on the heels, imaginary strength, palms facing flat down, special attention to the middle finger of the chin, mouth closed, tongue of the ceiling of the mouth, inhale into the belly. Exhale, wash the color down the arms, the palm of the feet. Drop it in the hand. Inhaling up. So wash the color out. Inhale up. Exhale down. Uplift from heaven. Just 
two more. Deeper. Sound. One more. Deep. Exhale out. Four. Then we're gonna go for one bonus, the fourth breathing. One big breath. One. Two, deep for two. Stage two. Stage three. Stage four. Out of the hip, up the toes. Exhale. Feel. And shifting out. Wide the stance. Hollow fist with right on the hip. Half force stance. And exhale. Help us rotate to the femur. Inhaling up. Exhale. And reverse it. Excellent. Hey, Bob, is this your car? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay. No. I was like teaching a class real quick right outside. Oh, no <laughs> Thanks, man. Really cool when uh, you can let people know what you're doing and they don't write you a ticket. It's, it's good stuff. Okay, so come right back up. Actually, you know what? Let's do one. Exhale out. We'll do one golden tortoise. Palms facing the ceiling, as you guys know. Exhale. Pelvis rotates on the feet. Nice and straight down. Elbows in front of the eyes. Straight line from the top of the head to the tailbone. Weight mostly on the heel. Belly soft, the shoulder blades disappear in the back. Exhale, wash the color of the palms, fingertips. Exhale, down the legs. Exhale, the arms. Exhale, open the hands. Exhale, straight back. Lift the collarbone. Really important. I've been driving a lot today, so I can feel it in my lower back. So. It's really important to get the posture correct here so that you don't weaken the lower back, strain it. So I'm pushing my tailbone back, straight back that way. And my head, nice and straight. And even the muscles of my neck lift my neck and my head to straighten and flatten out the upper back and my collarbone lifts. All of that. Keep my spine straight. Inhale deep. Exhale. The whole body. Two more. Exhale, softly the body. Soft, unnecessary tension. Keep the tension that you need to maintain the posture. Exhale. Deep. Exhale again. And two up with the heavens. Flash relaxation on the leg, inhale deep, exhale, kicking out, shake, tip the weight. Out, draw the color up the leg as you inhale. Reeling in a fishing line, exhale, kick it out. Beautiful. Okay, now let's talk about these moves. We're going to get into a front stance. In this front stance, that means you're going to have 70% of the weight forward and some people would do their front stance. I will say this, do your front stance the way you do your front stance. Uh, and there's always going to be ways to augment your front stance uh, to make it more practical. If you do not play push hands on a regular basis, uh, I recommend just getting as comfortable as you can and put 70% uh, of that weight forward without putting the knee over the big toe, meaning that I'll step back just a little bit here. See my foot, right? Yes, you can. So, nose, knee, toe. Tony knows. My back, knee, I soften, drops down. There's 30% weight here. Notice that my hip softens into my lead, decreases my groin like this. So, I got a little spiral. However, you do your front, your front stance, I'm showing you mine. This is what I do for push hands, and then I do this in all my young style front stance moves to always be prepared for the push hands. And what that really means is that I will always want to be prepared for practical, the practical use of these uh, 
pressure redirection. So, with my front stance, I have my hands out. Your hands can be at this level. You've seen me do, and we've done this together, embracing the one. Embracing the one is a really particular type of, of exercise. It's, of course, a standing uh, qigong, nagong exercise, but the hands are, are meant to play at the shoulder and elbow level. So you see that the hands are around the elbow. Uh, it could be right at the elbow of your opponent. And you would control you move the opponent's arms in any particular way. And uh, you might use just the waist. You might use a little bit of the hip. Notice that I've integrated my hip. You might start to move the, the feet. Notice that my toe and my knee move together. And if I were to switch the other side. So you do this. Now, this exercise in and of itself, also similar to our leading the sheep along exercise from the 12 yin set. Both embracing the one and leading the sheep along are from the 12 yin set of, of uh, Wu Sao Nico. And we're going to take those concepts that you can learn from a, another video uh, that's on my head. And you're going to slightly just move the hands in the body. This little movement right here. We're just going to go left and right. You might notice that there's a slight bounce in my left and right. Now I'll talk about that in a minute. But just think about going left and right. Now notice this. I'm using the waist to power the movement. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. I'm using the waist catalyzed by the breath to do this movement. Now, what you'll also notice is that the fingers are activating. So I'm connecting the movement. Sometimes people will overemphasize one or the other. They'll overemphasize the waist movement and the rest of the body just relaxed in the waist moves, which is great. It's awesome. It's great when you can, when you, when you can focus that way. Fantastic. And then you have the reverse breathing Tai Chi, which is all about going from the limbs, from the, the appendages, all the way into the core. So you're sucking the color in, the breath work, the visualization through the fingertips into the belly. So here we're doing both at the same time. So we're going to activate the fingers slightly and let the breath pull in and catalyze the movement. It's a chain reaction. I cannot stress enough that this is a chain reaction. If you find it challenging and difficult, because it is, it is not an easy thing to pick up like that. Uh, it actually takes a lot of practice. Uh, just focus on exhaling, pushing the color out of your hands, inhale, draw it. Exhale, push it out of your hands, inhale, draw it in. But over time, the more you get used to it, the more you're gonna see that there are moments within moments. And the more you get more comfortable with those moments within moments, the more you're gonna be able to feel the chain reaction. So don't worry too much about feeling every moment that I'll articulate here. Just know that the deeper you go, you're going to find moments for yourself and you'll be able to articulate what you need to do if, with, with, with a deeper thought into it for yourself. All you need to know is that as you inhale, go one way, exhale, and as you're isolating the waist movement. Now, the other note that I was saying is the little bounce. Notice that I'm actually drawing a figure eight with my hands. So I'm actually going like that. So I'm bouncing up, down, up, down, up, down. Now, you can also go the reverse, down, up. Do the reverse if you like as well. So that's that's two variations right there. You can also just go flat, but you want to be able to bring a little bit of spin and another access of power, meaning not just the, the uh, x axis but the y axis. <laughs> so, and why are we doing this? So, this is one of those moments when you're playing with somebody at uh, mid range, mid range for push hands or for grappling is right here. They call it hand fighting in. Wrestling. Wrestling, we call this hand fighting or hand fighting. So you're in hand fighting distance. Most people are going to aim for the wrist. Always wrong. <laughs> and what I mean by that, wrong has quotations. It is less efficient for controlling the arm to aim for the wrist. It is more efficient to, be, to control the elbow, the same way that we need to control the leg, you go for the knee rather than an ankle or the hip. So you want to control this point because you, can, you have the midway point between the hand and the shoulder and, and can pin it to the body. So the second you find somebody going for hand fighting, and a lot of folks do that, even in Tai Chi, they, a lot of Tai Chi folks are not uh, privy to the aim for the elbow information. So the thing you were gonna do 
is you're going to move the hands and wrists out of the way, and you're going to go right for the elbow. And the second you go for that elbow, you're going to press. I have inside elbow, outside elbow. I have a position on top of that arms on both near both elbows. The fingers might the fingers might go around my opponents. If I'm if this is me and this is my opponent's arm, my other arm might be on the outside, just on top. And both hands might have a similar position, both my left and right. And I'll take this and I'll just nudge it. I'll just, I'll just whip it a little bit with this motion right here. And I'll whip them one way. And the second that I know they're trying to come back, I'll whip them the other way. So, and then I'll do that a few times. And I'll, I'll, I'll spread it out. I won't just only do that, but I'll spread it out. And this starts to get them a little bit teetering on their own balance. Just this, just this little motion gets them teetering on their own balance. So and notice that I'm only using my waist. I'm only using my waist for this. This is, this is to give them, to give my opponent and remind myself of a very quiet control. I'm, I'm doing a very quiet, calm control for myself. And I'm just nudging them a bit. And when the opponent sees this, in my experience, again, when my opponents see this, they start to get a, a little concerned because they're, they're moving their feet. If I've, if I've done this properly, I'm getting their whole body. I'm whipping their elbows. If you're whipping the elbows, both elbows are going to pull the shoulder. The shoulders will pull the hip and they'll likely step or they'll fall a little bit off their own balance and have to come right back, meaning that you've broken the center line for them for just a moment and they have to, they want to come back to it. The second that you get them wanting to come back somewhere, you know where they want to go because you know where they want to go. You can give them a little bit extra, a little more than they want in the other direction. So you nudge them one way and as they're coming back, you nudge them the other way. And then they go even farther in the other direction. So they're trying to come back up, you nudge them a little bit more. Next secret, just for this one little uh, next uh, component to this technique, no secrets here. Next component to this technique is that you're gonna take the hands and as you whip them back on the second try, so you're going, remember you have your little figure eight. As you bring them back on the second try, whip them down one and then scoop the hands under and you lift them a little bit with the, the same, the opposite direction. You just lift this gentle roll that most of us know from Tai Chi, pushing out, drawing in this little gentle lifting of the chi and pushing it out, that little gentle roll. Gentle pressure redirection on the elbow because you're going to feel the tension in their arms. They're going to come back and want to lift the arms up and bring their body back to center. So you're going to lift gently up as they come back to center. So one, two. One, you whip them down when they come back up. Here, you give them right as they pass center line, just a little bit more than they want. And that's going to cause more than likely, and of course, there are many different scenarios. So, um, but this is a very basic uh, a basic way that I've been able to start getting to my point of just this. So you can add this technique or switch legs, you know, do it, do it as many times as you'd like. You can add this technique to, and start chaining them together with other moves, meaning that you've got your opponent to move. Maybe then you give them a push, or maybe then you do an arm drag, or maybe then you, you do a log type move, what we call the log, where you, throw one arm and you just knock them off balance. They come back up and you go, meaning I'm pulling one arm or I'm creating a shape that leverages onto an arm. I'm not grabbing it because I don't want to be tense. I'm reaching my fingers down and I'm, I'm catching their, their wrist of one hand and I'm logging up. And this, you can always combo these things together. So you whip them one way, whip them the other way, and then boom, log them one way or push them the other way. You start chaining these together. And that just starts, but I do recommend uh, starting out slow with opponents when you're starting to control their mind, uh, depending on the type. You actually really have to measure it by type, personality type. Uh, some people you have to start strong with, uh, and others you have to, uh, in my experience, some people I have to start strong with, and some people I'm just, you know, I can gauge where they're at right away. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, well let's just make, have fun. And, and But also, you have to earn, earn a push on them. So, and, and that to me is a really important mentality as well. Uh, is that you have to really earn it if you're going to get it. Like someone threw me on Friday, like we were full body wrestling and they actually got me by the hips and dragged me down for like a second I got my back up. And it's uncomfortable for me personally. And like, I was like, oh wow, like, I just went down. I had to change my whole mentality in an instant because my game, when I was playing with that person, 
I expected less of that person's game. And then they came out of nowhere with like a more sophisticated technique. I was like, okay, switch my game. So, um, and always be prepared to revamp your mentality. The thing that we're doing here is we're doing techniques to get someone into a hole. So that hole, that mental hole, uh, we're creating, we're helping to create space for that with these little movements that will make someone feel like they're out of control, that you're so sensitive and strong. Now let's add another move here. Let's bring feet, uh, feet shoulder width or length apart parallel. And just to, to, to experience this for a second, inhale deep and exhale, push just the hip forward. When I say the hip, I mean just the hip. Inhale, bring it back. Same with the other side. Exhale, push just the hip. Inhale, bring it back. And just feel that, that motion. Inhale, exhale down. Inhale, exhale down. You can also try it with an exhalation. Exhale, inhale down. Exhale, inhale down. If you are if ever played judo, you know it as a hip check. And the hip checks oftentimes will stop a hip throw. Someone's going for a throw and they're trying to shoot their hips into yours to knock the space to claim the space that you were in. So you're here, they hip check, they throw their hip in, they lift you up and they toss you down. So you would hip check them, meet them before they meet you. You would place your hip here and block the space. Sometimes you place your hand there. So we're gonna work this very subtle move for push hands in Tai Chi is sliding the hip in. We're sliding the hip in. And what we're gonna do for that is we just did this little exercise, just to, which is great. I highly recommend this. And if you've ever uh, placed your hands on a tree, which is a great judo exercise, and just jump, turn your hips, and jump back, jump, turn your hips, and jump back. It's a great exercise to do. And then you can do it on the other side as well. Uh, favor one hip, then the other hip, maybe 10 times, maybe 25, 50 times. Uh, so now we're going to do this Wu style exercise to warm us up for the push hands, freestyle push hands, freestyle grappling. We've done this before, seated on the back leg. The wrists are lifted slightly. The fingers are relaxed. Not completely dead weight, but very gently relaxed. Not fully energized. So, elbows are also down. Weight on the back foot. And we're going to inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. One breath per side. Inhale, exhale. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm leading with the hips this time rather than the waist. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Notice that my knee is stable. Inhale, exhale. And notice that my shoulders aren't rolling either, but the hip is rolling the shoulder for me. Switch legs. Actually, switch, keep the same leg, switch the direction. So we're go I'm going and I'm rolling back rolling back, rolling back. Whatever hip I'm leading with is rolling back. Now I'm gonna lead with rolling forward, rolling forward. Now, the thing that we're doing here with the wrists is helping to bring more power. Remember I was telling you, um, saying before that sometimes people inhale and energize the fingertips and sometimes they emphasize the waist and the hands are, are to be dead weight. Um, different scenarios call for different techniques, but the ability to have the library of techniques is very valuable to know when to utilize them and you'll just learn over time. So this one, we're keeping, we're keeping this ball bearings rolling as my, my teacher would call it. So now my hip is rolling over and forward, back over forward, back over forward. Now let's switch legs. Now we'll roll back, hip rolling back and back. Inhale, exhale. And now forward. So forward should almost feel like you're pitching a ball, like you're about to throw the ball or throw the hook or the overhand. So back forward. And now we're gonna bring this into push hand. This is one of those subtle movements that'll help to break down the mentality of your opponent. Here we are. So we warmed up, you're in your 50-50 clinch. Now you could also be at mid range as well, but we'll talk about this for the, the clinch first. I should talk about mid range. Mid range, you're here, you're doing your little whipping because that whipping is happening from mid range. Now you have this moment. 
this moment right here, the stretching, one knee slightly going a little bit forward. You have to remember that as a little subtlety of the technique. And the stretching concept is a variation of this mechanic that we're just doing. So we're gonna use the flexibility from this mechanic to push the hip into our opponent. So why would we push the hip into our opponent? Multiple reasons. Now you could be hip to hip or thigh to thigh, and you could be stepping, if you're doing a moving step and you just create a little space, you might even lift the opponent's chest, etc. cetera. Uh, you create some space up here and you fill some space down here. However, if you're in mid range, this movement right here will help to counterbalance if your thighs are touching with the opponent. It'll help to counterbalance and bring some weight into their, their leg. It's uncommon, it's an uncommon technique to press into someone's leg in their thigh, even subtly with such um, purpose. We have clear purpose here, We're moving the hip forward. And the hip, notice that the pressure is shooting this way. The pressure is shooting this way. Pressure shooting that way. The knee is going forward and you're stretching the hip. If the other opponent's knee was, uh, was thigh, was next to mine, or even the knee, sometimes people might cage with the knees. But what we're doing here is we're just stretching the hip, opening the hip up. You might flick, flick, you get back to a, a standing position, and you're doing this little movement. And you're doing this little movement. Notice that you're setting up your own uh, windup here, but you're also pressuring into the opponent's thigh. If you do this a few times, more than likely your opponent will start to react to it. If you're playing fixed step push hands, they will likely, in my experience, uh, will likely start pressing against thigh to thigh uh, or knee to knee. They'll, they'll, you're instigating the response of someone pressing in this way. Now, they may start caging you as a response. Again, caging means using your knees to create a cage like these, like these these grates behind me that are protecting the windows to create a cage so that your opponent has to walk around it or it's blocked from moving through it. So when you create a little cage here, when you create this little hip pressure, then they start to try to cage your knee. That's great because you've just instigated something that you want. The second you start feeling them cage the knee, you can lean back and pull. So we have the same concept here, caging a little bit. I'm, using the hip a little bit to instigate the cage as they start pushing forward here, whip and pull. So we're doing the same whip and pull. Now notice that we have a little combination here. So you have your whip and pull, one, two, maybe. They came back to center. You use the hip on the thigh. You may do it a few times. You might still be playing with the hands, etc. You do it a few times on the thigh. If you're doing moving step, to, it'll, it'll have some variations you might step into the opponent and bring the leg back step in bring back and then step around it meaning that you instigated more pressure on their front leg or weight on their front leg here fix step push it in they'll lean forward a little bit more than likely and the second you feel that lean you take advantage and drop your weight back notice that i very rarely give up space unless i'm sucking my opponent into it so i will lean back and drop 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 it Pull. On the other side, this is the same right leg forward. I'm dropping back and I'm pulling. I'm softening my the same hip that I pushed forward. I'm now softening. It's melting away like butter, meaning that hip should disappear. It should almost feel like you could shoot an arrow. The hip is right here right now. An arrow would go right through to that grate behind me. So whip, whip, cage, play, uh, hip, hip, and then pull after you've been the cage. That pull, you leave this leg out. Multiple reasons for that. Um, in jiu-jitsu, if you're gonna fall down with them, you're gonna turn the foot. So if you're gonna play a ground game, you'll be able to, to follow them. Uh, in push hands, a lot of times people in the World Cup will aim for the knee as they're falling, like a, like a kneecap, to, to essentially rip through your, your, um, your knee as they're falling. So, you always make sure that as you're doing it, you're dropping backwards, you're also softening, connecting the toe and the kneecap. So the hip softens and melts away. This toe is gonna to spin with my kneecap. And this is to protect you. You wanna make sure that you are protecting this toe. 
this section right here. You want to make sure that if someone falls on this, which happens, it, 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 it definitely happens. If someone falls, you can bend, keeping the toe and the knee aligned, and fall on on top of that. You're spinning yourself, kick the other leg around, and you will. It's happened to me many, many times. It's always saved my knee to be able to spin like that. Uh, really important. So again, the hip. To give you more context, I'm going to use my arm. I'm going to push my hip out. And if this is the opponent's leg, I feel the pressure. I feel that solid leg here. And I'm going to push it a few times just to make them feel almost like you're taunting them. You might do it in – not. it's not a real taunt. It's to instigate a movement. So remember, this is all about mind control. This is all about uh, – or perceived mind control. This is all about getting your opponent to get into a, an emotional space where they're giving you power. So – and then playing from that and maintaining that position yourself. So we have one, we have two, we have this wonderful drop. Let's drill that drop for a second. Inhaling up, and like you're holding a big barrel. Notice I'm keeping my feet shoulder width apart right now. And I'm going to exhale, I'm gonna turn. Almost like I'm turning a wheel or dumping the barrel. I'm gonna melt away. We've done this before. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Notice that as I bend, I still keep the spine straight. So I'm not bending my back. I'm keeping my spine straight. Straight line from my tailbone to the top of the head. And I'm melting the hip away. Inhaling, coming back up. Exhaling, melting the hip away. Inhaling, coming back up. When I inhale, a few details here. I already have, a, I think, a few videos on this, on the crank. So um, I would look on my channel for the crank. But as you inhale up, the hand that's inhaling up, the tricep is slightly inflating. Notice that I started with the triceps uh, very relaxed, the elbows straight down. That is because that is, that is my default from loose style of having very soft elbows, etc. rather than starting full and dropping down. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. That I've looked. Even just now, I love this feeling of starting full. However, we want to make sure, I want to make sure that I'm being very, very intense. So when I first drop, and then I start to fill up, and then I drop. Inhaling up, gentle pulling, gentle pushing. One hand pulls, the other one pushes. The one that's dropping is dropping and pulling at the same time. Meaning that the elbow should feel like gravity's pulling it down and the fingers should feel sticky as if they're stuck on something. And as the elbow drops, by nature of that stickiness, it pulls. So I don't, I don't necessarily mean that you're pulling. I mean that the stickiness pulls the object down and the other hand pushes through the shoulder. That is if you're doing it um, from, from double inside position or from shoulder position. So again, that same movement here, even if you're just pulling the hands down, you still have that softening hip. That softening hip was the reason we were doing that drill. And this is not the crank move. So don't confuse this dropout as the crank, but it is utilizing a component of one crank drill. So, okay. Uh, so next up, I want to bring it, I want to do a, a, at least a, a couple more. Let me check the time here. Um, I want to do a couple more, which I think are really, we'll do two more. And the two are going to be shoulder and rib. Shoulder and rib. So rib is really interesting. Um, and let's do that first. Maybe we'll only do the rib because it's so interesting. So rib is interesting because the fact that when you're here, and you're essentially going to use your rib like grating cheese. I'm not sure if I've ever really articulated it like this before, but it should feel like you're grating cheese, meaning that you have a cheese grater at home and you got mock cheese and you do this. And sometimes you might move the cheese grater and just on the cheese and sometimes you might move the cheese on the cheese grater. Think about the rib cage, which as you inhale and you really soften, you want to feel, you want to feel the, the ribs almost expanding like fingers getting farther apart, meaning here, you want to feel them expanding uh, when you do certain types of stretches, etc. So in a similar way, when you're doing, you're in this front stance, let's say you're body to body with an opponent, 
really, really important. Also, it could be if you're not body to body, if you're mid-range, you could have the opponent's hand on your chest or on your ribs. Really, really important. It could be on the side, etc. You inhale and you open the ribs up. And as you exhale, you clamp them back down. So that's if you open the, the hand and then you bring it back to the, the fingers together. Inhaling up, exhaling down. That was a very overt moment that I just, just showcased. Just this little moment down. I want to paint the picture a little bit more. You are body to body in a 50-50 clinch with your opponent. You connect to your opponent. And there's pressure here. There's pressure on the shoulder. And the shoulder, we've seen these little waves before. You've seen the little shoulder waves before you push the shoulder forward. You might even lift the shoulder up, which can be a Tai Chi no-no, but you might even lift it up for a moment just to feign and then drop it back down, softening the shoulder. And you're doing all this to lift your opponent's shoulders to take space and to claim the space and relax into that space every time. So I guess we just kind of did the shoulders a little bit. But what I'm getting at is that you work your way in. You work your way in with the arms. You work your way in with the body, you work your way in with the hip in a similar way that we were doing before, but then you connect the ribs. When you connect the ribs, chest to chest, you're gonna lift up, you're gonna lift the chest, you're gonna lift the ribs, and you're gonna exhale softly. And let's do a drill like this. Imagine you have your hand, your lead leg hand, the hand, my, my right leg is forward, my right hand is forward, is gonna to come to the small of the back of your palm. The small of the back. Now, it could be on the scapula. It could be a little higher, but let's, let's keep it on the, the small of the back. Right? You can do this from multiple angles. You're going to inhale. You're going to roll this hand in, a gentle, sticking, gentle roll. You're going to roll in. And as you roll in, you're going to inhale up. As you inhale up, you're going to expand the chest as if it's lifting up to the sky. And this is for the purpose of the drill. If you're doing it with an opponent, you're gonna lift your chest as if you're climbing over the hill of your opponent's body. So the opponent's shoulders more in particular, it's gonna be as if you're running up their shoulders, slowly creeping up, 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 up. And then as you exhale, you're going to keep this hand like a little cup, a little ridge hand almost. You're gonna roll. And these are two counterpoints, the low and the high. High is up here, rib cage. And you're going to exhale down and fall down. Right here. Inhale up and exhale. So inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. So make sure, again, this little hand is helping to create this little leverage point. As you inhale up, again, what's happening here, you have your opponent. You wouldn't be able to see me if I had a partner here. The opponent's shoulder would be likely rested right on, on my breast shoulder area. And my head is protected. Their head's probably right here. I'm lifting. I have my hand on the lower back. I'm lifting up. And I'm exhaling. I'm sticking myself in. I'm sticking myself in almost like I'm giving them a really wonderful hug like I haven't seen them in a long time. Uh, you just, just fall asleep in to the opponent. But what's really happening is that you cause tension here in the lower back. By lifting them forward, you caused uncommon pressure in their lower back. It's not a pull and it's not a grab. It's a rolling lift of their lower back muscles and the skin. And they will, it's, it's, it will not feel comfortable for them. And it's not meant to do anything other than to, to get them to, uh, if you were, there's many different ways to do this. I did this on like Coach Lee Tai Lab when I was, uh, and I've mentioned this before when I was on the, uh, the uh, New York International Sancho team. They looked at me like, <laughs> I was 18. And uh, it's really gentle roll to get the opponent to step, to lose balance for a second. But here, you're not really getting them to lose balance. You're getting them to fall into you. So you pull them into you. And as they come into you, open up the chest. Notice that I'm favoring one side. I'm not doing it on both sides. I'm not lifting up both sides of my rib cage equally. I'm lifting up the lead side and I'm exhaling, dropping back down. Look at the line that's being drawn, a spiral that's going into my hips and it's the ball that put the big toe at the heel. Everything's spiraling back down. Inhaling up, exhaling, everything spiraling down. I'm pulling my opponent, rolling them to fall into me here. As they fall into me here, they're trying to escape up here. As they try to escape up here, I'm running up their body and exhaling, collapsing down. 
what's going to happen at the end of this movement is it'll it'll curve the spine. You're likely breaking the posture of your opponent. And it's so important, so powerful. So as you break that posture, you may have to do this a few times too. You may you may pummel in, come up, down, take the space, pummel a little bit more, come up, down, take the space again. And by the time the posture is broken, you can execute. In my experience, you can execute. Uh, I can execute a few different moves. And a big throw is possible, but maybe not necessarily the classiest thing to do. If you have your opponent's posture completely broken, you may want to place them down nicely, or you may want to just push them off. Uh, you may want to like tap them and let them get back to, to posture. If you're training for sport to win in competition, then yes, put them in and either walk them out of the ring or play some threat or, or drop them down hard in many different ways. But again, this move, this movement is so, I will make a more, uh, even more detailed video on this movement because that's how important it is. And it's one of the most important um, grappling concepts that I've experienced uh, from, that, that is from push hands initially, uh, articulated to me in push hands, but definitely applies to all the grappling. The little roll, actually, up there. Now the other hand, let's just talk about that for one moment. The other hand will be in the 50-50 clinch posture, meaning that your elbow will be down. You'll probably have your opponent's arm pinned somehow. You'll be dealing with their other arm. So you're going to keep that here. Inhale up, drop down. You may have to come in even more. Drop down. You may have to keep on doing that. This arm may have to assign, may have to deal with a, a bunch of different variables here to with for the opponent's other arm. But all you're really doing is keeping them at the same distance. And Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. So remember, rib cage opening up. If I were to do it just standing, feet shoulder width apart, parallel. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, and this is us now bringing the Tai Chi concepts, the slowing ourselves down to speed up our perception. We're bringing these concepts directly into strategic movements and an actual strategy for your push hands game. So again, let's just review really quickly how each one of them ties together. We have this whip. The whip can be left and right at first, and then you start to bring the figure eight into it. The figure eight can be either up across, notice I'm going up as I go across, then down, or it could be down across, up, down across. And normally you would strategically use both of them, meaning that you might pull someone down and then as they're coming back, you lift them up and you might stay on the same axis or you might pull them down and they come up and you pull them down the other way. So there's there's a bunch of different ways to do that. But if you pull them down and they're, they're, they're stepping around and losing their balance, now we're gonna add the second one, which is the hip. You're pushing the hip in, opening it up, getting some thigh contact, maybe some knee contact, but you're not doing overt caging meaning that you're not turning the, the kneecap independent of the foot, especially. That's, a, that's a, in my opinion, a big no. Uh, and it's very, very rare that I do it. And there's always a reason behind it. Um, and, and so you're pushing in, and then they might cage, and then they commit more to this to push into your leg, and then you're going to drop and pull. Drop and pull. Remember, you're keeping the toe and the knee aligned so that if they fall on your leg, you can turn with them and sit onto onto the, the, their back, if need be, to save your knee and also to potentially continue the ground game. And finally, we talked about very briefly, shoulder. The shoulder may come in when you do the pummeling and you might be creating some positions, but we didn't talk too much about that strategy, but we did talk about this handle behind, this gentle handle right behind and lifting up and rolling down. Lifting up, 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 up and rolling down again on the other side. You're going to inhale, lift up on one side like you're climbing their body. So your body to body, chest to chest. You might feel it in the ribs right here. You might only do it with this area of the ribs. You may do it with this area or up to the shoulder. The whole thing may activate. So you're going to find it and lift it. Pull them into you here and drop down here. Pull them in, drop down. Pull in, drop down. And with that, then you have your finisher. And your finishers, of course, are going to be throw or a drop, or you can simply, sometimes even from this posture, just drop your weight down to the point where you just topple over. So that's happening many times. That said, let's 
Let's uh, uh, cool down with some stretches, two up with the heavens. Feet two fists apart. Switch. One, two, three. Right here. And right here. For the ears. Massage. One. And switch. And roll the eyes up, down, left, right. Up, down, left, right. And up, down, left, right, left. Up, down, right, left. And circle one, two, three. Close and reverse. Circle one. Two, three, <laughs> and that was a great class today. Inhale, white line to the belly, and exhale, spread the color to the whole body. Use the sound. Two more. White light. Wash the body. Wash the bone marrow. Inhale, white light, and wash. Gratitude for the body. People in your life, the space that you're in. Thank you so much, as usual. Trading. Mark, uh, what did you think of those concepts? Great, great, Jen. It's a lot of fun. Before, before we finish up, I'm sorry. Any thoughts, questions, or ideas before we finish up? Uh, it's really, it's really fun for somebody like me that's done uh, a lot of form, but not a lot of um, push hands. And so the kind of the movements that you demonstrating I can visualize it I don't have a lot of practical applications so it's it's a lot of fun to be able to finally utilize some of these various forms that I've been practicing for years and see how they can be applied to you know to move to to create that reaction that you're talking about so just um, it <laughs> looking forward to that time when uh, I can actually try try to play more push hands Hopefully sooner rather than later. Yeah, exactly. I love you so much, man. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, thank, you. thank you, everybody who watches this. And of course, uh, justiceforhire.com to become part of the, the show that I'm producing with the global community, be a hero, client, or villain. Uh, Real World is the, the company producing, and that's our film technology company. It's, we've built a cinematic social network. So come and join us and uh, invest in Real World if you want to own part of the company at wefunder.com slash R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. And you can find me at janstaichi.com. And my Patreon to support the channel, the YouTube channel, is patreon.com slash janstaichi. So hope you guys enjoy. Please uh, ask any questions, share any thoughts or ideas, and hopefully this is helpful to you and your push hands game. Love you guys. Love you more. Thank you. All right, let me press, uh, let me stop. Okay.